Um, I guess, unfortunately, we're going to have to start with injuries again. And obviously, yeah. the disappointing news to you, to just your reaction to that. I'm bitterly disappointed because you is a great boy. Um, he's been performing excellent of late. And he's really took on board what we're looking for from the staff and what we're trying to implement in the games in terms of in possession and out of possession. And he's also shown that he could play two or three positions. You know, he was really pushing on with his performance levels and to go and get this type of injury at this period of his career is terrible for him. But what we do know is that we all support him. Um, there's a great staff here, medical uh, side of things the guys are very experienced and they'll help him and support him as much as he can and he'll get some time off with his family there's no problem about that you do strike me as the kind of head coach as well that you're big on that support network I'm sure you'll be keeping in contact with him as well won't you yeah I've not had a chance to speak to him obviously because I think he goes in and gets his operation quite quick but however when he comes back my door will always be open for him he could come up and have a coffee and chat anything football anything family because um as I said, I really care for my players and I want to make sure that they've all got a good feeling about their show because I know how important it is for them to progress with their careers. Equally as disappointing, when we spoke on Tuesday morning, we were talking about him being in the World Cup squad. Yeah, that's really just a double blow for him. You know, he had the positivity and I congratulated him in front of the group and we all gave him a round of applause because he should feel very proud of himself that he's made the national team squad. However, these things happen in football where you take uh, bad injuries and it could step you back. But he's a positive guy and he's very professional. I'm sure that you'll kick on with his career as soon as he comes back and he's in great hands here at Huddersfield Town. Not just you, to, unfortunately, who was stretched off on Wednesday night, but also Ben Jackson. Can you tell us about the nature of Ben's injury? Yeah, young Ben's just got a scratch on his knee. He needs just a, a bit of water and a sponge. And I'm joking, but oh, with all seriousness, Ben's going to be fine. He's a very tough, robust uh, young lad. Um, and he was really enjoying himself there on uh, the evening game against Sunderland. You could see how much freedom he plays when the way he's going out and expressing himself. And it's not always the case with young players like that, but he's really coming into his own Ben Jackson. He's playing uh, many different positions as well, which is excellent. Can you share the nature of the injury at all? I think it was just an impact injury, to be honest with you, on his shin, but nothing to worry about. He'll be back on the training pitch today and looking forward to Saturday's game. Potentially being involved tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. 100% be involved. Great news. Um, Kean Harrods returning to the club from his loan spell at Bradford City. Obviously, circumstances beyond your control, but what support will be in place for Kean now he's returned to Huddersfield Town? Um, you'll be coming back and there'll be discipline there put in um, and that's just where it is at the moment you know you'll definitely be disciplined um, moving on back to well I say moving on moving back to Wednesday a few days on mark from that Sunderland game how how do you assess that now that the dust has settled it's a terrific performance I have to be honest with each other the players played out of their skin um, they played on the front foot. They did everything that we worked on in training and they carried it out to the tee. It was just unfortunate, the timings of the goals, because we conceded the two goals straight after our big chances and not just half chances, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper and also another one from the set play. Um, so there is a little bit of naivety there that we've got to stamp out, but it's a strange feeling when you're sitting bottom of the table and you come off and your fans clap you off the pitch. Um and that's what these fans are at this great club. They're so supportive of this young team at the moment. They know and understand the volume of injuries we have. And uh, we're just trying to focus on what we could affect at the moment in terms of what we're doing on the training pitch and also giving these players a good feeling going into the games. And their performance levels are really good at the moment. Um, we're, become, we're looking more solid um, we've had a few clean sheets and we've actually won games against good teams now so we've got to continue it and we know it'll be a tough test Saturday Luke. Does it feel almost you know the, the side was so close to taking the lead and Sunderland go up the other end and, and we all know what happens plus with all these injuries Mark that you're suffering does it almost feel like you can't catch a break at the moment? Yeah of course you know but what I would say is that He's all known my history and the clubs have been in and the situations have been in and I've been in worse situations than this. I'm never going to complain about it because I believe in the players. 
what I would say is that you know the way my mindset is. For example, when we've had all these injuries, you're focused on the younger ones, and we've also done a lot of like games in the afternoons where we're working with this young group against the other young group that Worthy's brought up. Um, and that has been the plan to make sure that they're ready in case they need to step in. So all the players have been getting the focus and the attention. It's not the case of that if you've not been playing, you've just been sitting there in the shadows. We've been working relentless with these guys. That's why the likes of Brody Spencer, who comes in, performs. That's why the likes of Diara comes in and he performs, because they're getting the care and the attention that they deserve and they need. Yeah, on Brody, we're going to speak to him later on, but he looked really lively on Wednesday. You must be so pleased. I'm absolutely proud of him. He's a fantastic boy and he's a, a very, very, very strong young player. He's got a strong mentality and for a, a young guy, 18, he actually plays like a man um, and he's got to continue it. There's a chance there for him to go and keep this jersey and I've told him that if he performs like that, it's going to be very hard for me to put him out of this team at the moment. How easy or difficult is it? We talk about positives from Wednesday night, but ultimately no points to show for it. Yeah. Is it to keep that the group's heads up? No, not at all, because we know we're target. So we know that we're going to have dips like that. And that's what I always say to you guys in the media and the press, that we have to be uh, balanced with, the, well, with our emotions. So when we're winning, not too high. And when we're losing, not too low. And always analyse it from the performance side of things. And it's difficult to come in when you lose 2-0 to Sunderland and be uh, positive. But you have to be positive because the performance was incredible at times, you know. We pushed Sunderland back. We hemmed them in at times. Their manager come out and say that it's the worst performance that he's seen from them since his time being there. The only reason that was is because we made them the worst. We actually pushed them to the limits. Um, and on another day, if we take our chances... We're sitting with another three points and we were only three points behind Sunderland. And you've got to understand that is where a team that's missing nine starters through injury, probably 11 now because of Turton and uh, Utah. So as I said, we're no complaining about it. It's a great chance for the young players to come in, show what they can do. And we trust them and we're working relentless with them and we're focusing on this game at the weekend. We've analysed Blackburn. They're a good, strong t team, but we believe we could go and win this game. Ultimately, obviously, where the football club are, points are needed, points are desired. And you look at the next three games, Blackburn, QPR, Swansea, there is a pressure that come that World Cup break, there could be a real gap between Huddersfield Town and, and the rest of the Championship. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And it's our job to make sure we get points in this next three games. We know the targets we've got to hit to stay in the league. And we know that when we get these injured players back, we'll be an absolutely different animal altogether. But it's a testament to the players that are playing in the moment because we focused on them and they've come with real confidence. And that's what I'm saying. It's not a team that's playing without confidence because if you were, there is no way you beat Millwall who are on the back of four wins and a draw. There is no way you go and perform like that against Sunderland in front of our own fans. It's just not possible to do that if you're no confident side. Um, so I'm really proud of the guys in that respect. And what they showed me in really bad conditions was that they rolled their sleeves up and they fought for every single ball. And that's exactly the spirit that we're needing until we could galvanise during the World Cup break and get everybody back together as quick as we can. For you, Mark, we know how much you enjoy this challenge and you're thriving here at Huddersfield Town personally. But how do you deal with the pressure that comes with this job? It's no pressure. Pressure is when you're my dad and you had to go out and work for four hundred pound a week putting scaffolding tubes up in the sky and having to look after four kids. That was pressure. This is my job. I love this job. I love working with these young players and I'm and, and I'm confident that when we get our experienced ones back, we're going to be a really good side. And I know that the, the league could change so quickly. Even if you go in a situation where it looks doom and gloom going into the World Cup break, when we get our players back we'll be a different animal. And when we start to get in a run of forum we're going to be a really hard team to contend with. You could see the clarity of what they're doing when they're with the ball. You could see the clarity and the strength of us. When we're not in possession now, it's very, very hard for teams to come and break us down. And it was just unfortunate the other night that we looked like we lost two naive goals on the counter-attack, which has not been like us in recent weeks. On to Blackburn tomorrow, second in the league. They look like a club who are 
vying to get back into that Premier League, it is going to be some test for your side, isn't it? Yeah, of course, you know, we know that they're really close now and they're focusing, but we also know that they lost against Coventry, who were in our situation, who have went and picked up form. We also know that um, they've got many dangerous players, but we've also got dangerous players that could hurt them. John Dal Thomason as well, he's a, another manager like yourself, adapting to life in the Championship. What, what do you know of him? Oh, well, we know about him. He's an amazing striker and a big personality, one of the best strikers to play in European football. So um, he's doing an amazing job there up at Blackburn. And as I said, I'm hoping that we have the three points and he can continue to be amazing. But the three points are coming back wash at the weekend. I guess another man who you can have a catch-up with after the full-time whistle. Yeah, of course, you know, it's been nice. I admire Tony Mowbray and he was very complimentary about me and the, and the team. Um, but it's not how my mindset is. I would rather that they talk negative about us and we were winning games. So, as I said, I want to win games. I'm here. This team need to understand the situation we're in and they're well aware of it and they're putting in strong performances. They've got to continue that and keep it up because... There's no other way. You have to roll your sleeves up, be focused and disciplined in everything we're doing, and we will be very focused and ready for the weekend's game. Best of luck, Fred. Thanks Thank for your you. time, Mark. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, we are back to Luke here. Hi, Mark. <clears throat> um, yeah, it was frustrating the other day to lose another player to that kind of injury because it's, it's not like it's a load of hamstrings or overtraining, it's just a lot of impact and freak injuries at the moment. It must be extra frustrating. Yeah, listen, it's absolutely frustrating, you know. Um, there is no doubt about it. However, what we've got to understand is that we've got players who have been getting uh, really pushed in training and they have to step into men's football now and they were well worthy of the performance they produced the other night because they're coming in the play with a real intensity. And what I was pleased about was that everyone in here was talking about our performances. I didn't really hear many years talk about Sunderland's performances, you know. And it's not always the case because when you go against teams that are big traditional clubs like them, they've always got two or three key players and dangerous players. But the whole talk was about our performances and that's the pleasing thing. It shows us that we're capable of competing and we're very capable of winning games against these clubs. It does look like there's a bit of rustiness in the finishing at the moment. Where do you feel like the goals could come from from this side? Yeah, listen, there's no doubt about that. You know, I know that all our players are capable of scoring goals and we've shown that. Um, what I would say is that in terms of our two strikers, they're not only um, getting themselves in good positions, but they're also bringing so much more to the team. I think you have all noticed how aggressive we are in our press at the moment and how hard it is to play through us. And there's been a lot of work being put on that in the training field to make sure that we're getting clean sheets. But it doesn't just come from the back players, it comes from the central strikers and the way they go to press the ball. And they've showed a real discipline uh, in that respect. And I know that with a little luck, luck and rub of the green, they'll definitely start to take their chances because they're getting the chances. Yeah, do you feel like it might be a case of you get one and then it's a bit of a floodgate might open up? Yeah, I really do. I feel it's also when Jack Radoni scores, he's just going to explode. Um, Jack Radoni is performing really well. Um, he's a great kid. He's very balanced out the whole group. He's the guy that comes in every day. It's just the same. You know, It does not matter what situation you're in and I admire him for that because that's the kind of character you need to go to the very top. Yeah, it's, it's not just on the strikers, is it? You do need goals from, from other players and Jack would be prime among them. Yeah, of course, you know, and it's like I said, it's not just the case that you're relying on the strikers. Dwayne Holmes goes one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper and could score on another day. He's more than capable of that. He has the shot at uh, Rotherham where the keeper makes an amazing save off the rebound. I think it was from maybe Rodzi or Wardy. Um, and as I said, on another day that goes in, so... Holmes, he could be sitting with two or three goals at the moment. And he's just got to keep getting in the right areas as well. All the forward players are doing that and we're giving teams problems in that respect. But it's just like you're saying, it's the execution and the technique just to be a little bit more composed in the areas and the goals will start to come. Because it does look like from the from the other numbers, things are 
starting to move in the right direction. So I guess it's is it sort of a bit of a trust in the process type thing? Yeah, yeah I think that's what it is. You know, we know that I've, I've made it clear we're in a very much a transitional period, but we're in a transitional period also with a horrific injury list. Um, and we're not complaining about it. And the guys are going out there and working hard. They're getting their share in great positions from the work that we're doing in the training field. And we're also looking more, more solid without the ball. And we've got to keep it up because we know that the quicker we get points and get out this bottom three, the better. I suppose it's a bit of a lesson as well the other night. The fact that Sunderland got those goals immediately after you've missed chances. It's, you know, you can use that. Well, I suppose the players don't need telling, do they? That's why you need to take those chances. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, the big thing for me was the behaviours from the player after the, the players after the game. They knew it. They, were, they knew they shot their shell on the foot. It was a case of not even needing to touch on it with them. They just knew. And that's a good sign when they know that they could do better in these situations. And what I always talk about is you have to be ruthless and clinical. When you get the chances in a league like this, it doesn't come around often. So make sure you're taking the chances. Does the injury lists and particularly longer term injuries like Ollie and, and Uta, does that put any thoughts to the January transfer window already in your mind? Yeah, of course. I mean, we know that the club's in a transitional period and the our chairman has decided to sell the club, so we know that there's not a big treasure chest there available, but I'm sure there'll be uh, room for manoeuvre. We've got a very experienced guys here, and Dave Baldwin and Lee Bromby and his staff, um, and they'll definitely, I'm sure, look to see if they could do some uh, things in the transfer window. We know it's a bad window. We know it's not a window that really brings exciting transfers, and we, we also know that players who are coming in, they have to be up to speed because other lads are starting to get a real intensity to their game and that intensity is probably different to what any of the other teams are playing with in the league at the moment and that's why we're performing and we're outrunning, we're outfighting teams and we've got to continue that and whoever comes in, they've got to get up to speed very quickly which is not always easy. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Stuart, we'll come to you. Good morning. Morning, Mark. How are you? Morning, Stuart. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, just with regards to January, I, I, I just wonder where you feel these two injuries have left you light because obviously Ollie's a right back and Uta's a centre back, but they can both play left back as well. I mean, the yeah. versatility of them is a bit of a blessing and a curse, isn't it? No, listen, it was great. I mean, there was a lot of, obviously, uh, we, we looked at um, the other night as well. So when uh, Utah went off, everyone expected us to bring on a centre-back. But why? Because we're two centre-backs that we had on the bench. One is a young lad who's just come back in and he's learning the game and he's obviously made a lot of capital, capital errors in recent weeks. So he's needing his time to work hard, which he's doing ever so well in training. And big boy was only trained three days. So people don't understand the situations you're in. Big boy who had a knee injury for three weeks, he's been out. So you don't just throw him in in games like that. You've got to protect the guys and bring them in when they're ready. And when he come on late on, he should have scored the goal with a header. So we're really flexible in these situations. I thought Josh Ruffles, who we've all known could play left of a, a back three, slotted in left side centre back fantastically back. No problems whatsoever. And Ben Jackson went back to left back and cruised it. Um, and when young Diara come on, he lifted the whole stadium. So Lobo went 1-0 down. Diara had two chances where he dribbled the whole length of the field and could have scored at the left post. And then the other one where the cross come in the box that he should maybe go with his head, but he tries to volley it in. Great positioning, great run, great energy. So that was, for me, really pleasing that they actually took our game up a level in that respect. But we have got many players there in the back line who are capable of playing two or three positions. We forget Ollie Turton as well, although he's injured. He's a guy that could play right side centre back. He could play right back. He could play right wing back, you know. So we're quite lucky in that respect. But what it is is that we've got an absolutely horrific, we we'll have to be honest, we we'll have a horrific injury list at the moment. It's got nothing to do with the training. It's all about the luck of the game situations that we're taking impact injuries or we're having serious injuries impacting us, which is things like uh, Yuta's Achilles or Ollie Turton snapping his ligaments. And that's just things that you have to manage. But for whatever reason, because we're bottom of the league and we had a, a horrendous start to the season, 
We have to manage them. I'm not the guy, I'm not the guy that's going to moan about this. I'm the guy that thinks about the strengths of the young players. I'm the guy that knows I've got experienced guys in there that will help them. Helic was outstanding the other night. He helped this young group. He was talking to them. He was positive with the guys. And that's what I'm expecting. Leaders like that. My big goalkeeper, Lee Nichols, he's the best goalkeeper in the league. And he was also positive and he led the team really well there the other night. And this is what I'm looking for, you know. And in, just in terms of the, in terms of the defensive unit, how, how's, uh, how's Tom at the moment? Yeah, Tom's uh, obviously struggling with COVID. Mm. Um, so we need to see how he settles down. I think probably uh, tomorrow is going to be difficult for him. Um, however, we'll just continue continually assess it as we go. And uh, any team that loses a player like Tom Lees, it's a massive loss. He's, for me, one of the best defenders in the league. There's no ifs or buts. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it must be a difficult one as a manager because with COVID, you, you just don't really know how long it's going to take, do, do you? Yeah. Physio can't tell you. He'll be out for three months or one week or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those kind of uh, situations where you're just trying to monitor it day by day. Also, the same with Anjurin. I'm sick going in the office after games and all the opposition managers are asking me about Anjurin. I've not even had Anjurin one day on the training pitch. That's where we're at at the moment. Mm -hmm. But I'm not coming in here and complaining to you guys because I believe in the other ones that are stepping in and they're doing well. There's no way you're performing in these games the way we have been if you're not playing with confidence and clarity in what you're doing in and out of possession. I mean, you've talked a lot about the spirit, not just today, but but recently. I mean, do, do you think in a strange kind of a way, these injuries help that spirit? You know, we're all in it together. We've, we've really got to look at... Obviously, they're not a good thing, but, but that it has that benefit that it sort of bonds you together as a group and really sort of forces people to take responsibility. Yeah, of course, it forces people to take responsibility. And sometimes in football, that's the flip side. That's how you get your chance. And as a young player, it's about how you take your chance and how you grasp it. And f what you could see from the other night, they're definitely grasping it, you know. And for us, it's encouraging that we're getting them to perform like that. So we need we need to continue it. We know the, the situation and the magnitude of the task we're in. We're not fooling anybody whatsoever. We know we're bottom of the league. We know that if we don't win the next three games, there could be distance. But we also know in the World Cup break, we could get 11 players back. Big players who have got big experience of playing in this league and will become a different animal. For me, it's pleasing that we're working hard in training and we're showing a real desire and a commitment to the cause. And I'm confident that at the end of the season, we'll all be sitting here and this team stays in the league. And you mentioned not wanting to expose Luke and Bette in the second half yesterday. So what, what is it about Brody Spencer's personality you felt he'd be he'd be ready to to step in and start that game on Wednesday. He does the basics well. He passes well. He tackles well. He runs hard. He does the basics well. That's what the top players in the world do. They're not doing tricks and flicks. They're not doing double shuffles and stepovers. They're doing the basics well. Brody does all the basics at a good level, and he's a tough kid. And this is what you need in this league. You've got to fight. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of in terms of when a talented young player is ready to step up, is it as much about the mental side and that toughness as the actual technical ability? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and he's, he's been in my head in recent weeks because he's really shown well in the training and he plays like a man. And, and just long term, I mean, he, he, he mainly played central midfield, I think, before he came to Huddersfield. What do you think will be his, his best position in a couple of years from now? How do you think he'll develop? I think he's going to develop into a fantastic right back. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for your time, Mark. Good luck. Thanks to you. Alfie, morning. Thanks for your patience. Morning, Mark. How are you? Alfie, you're always last. Sorry, pal. How are you doing? Right. Good to see you. Big happy fish, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. A um, couple of quick ones. From me, Sober Thomas, what's, what's he been like this week? Jumping at the bit, I imagine. Jumping at the bit, jumping all over the roof, annoying everybody. <laughs> um, just freaking out, freaking out every day because he's not been able to play. Um, he was quite shocked because two days uh, after the, the Millwall game, I put him in the training group uh, 
for the the shops in the non starters and he was looking as if to say go for a man in this group I went yeah and what I did was I did a really hard session with the guys and he ran about 7,000 metres and I'll tell you the reason I did it was to tire him out <laughs> just to tire him out because he's got so much nervous energy you've got to keep him under control and he come in the next day and was quiet because he couldn't he could hardly walk and then we gave him a day after that and all it was was to just to keep him calm, keep him reined in so that he comes and explodes here on Saturday. Do you think that that midweek off will have done him good? He obviously has quite a heavy schedule usually. Yeah, of course. Listen, he's a great boy. He's a street kid. He know, he, 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 he's a frustrating guy at times, but I love him to bits and I love that he brings his personality out there. He's not trying to act or be someone that he's not. He just expresses himself and what people don't realize about him is he's very very strong boy he's robust he does the back press well and he runs forward and everything he does is at high high intensity and he's going to be one hell of a player if he keeps progressing at this rate so i'm so thankful to have him back this weekend and finally from me i feel like i ask about him every press conference but jack rodoni are you doing anything a little bit different with him to try and get those goals out of him you know, we've seen at a lower level that he's scored quite prolifically. Yeah, Jack Radona is going to be top, guys. It's just a top, top player. You could but see. But in terms of getting those goals out of him, yeah. is there anything different that you're working on him with? Yeah, look, we've been focusing on very much his runs. You could see he's making some really penetrative runs and also with the ball, he's committing players, but it's his all round, all round game. You know, he's becoming the real complete packet. I had this situation at Ingolstadt with a lad called Philip Bilbia and everybody was saying, he can't score, he can't score. And I'm like, but he's getting in the positions. And then uh, the season we left, he scored, I think, over 10 goals and got a big money move to Hamburg, which is one of the biggest clubs in the world. It's going to come. It's just a matter of when, you know. And he, uh, what I love about him is that every day he comes in, he's balanced with his emotions. He never gets too high. And he never gets too disappointed. He just comes in the same every day. He's the same kid. He's the type of guy I think that was on, if he was on the biggest contract in the world or the lowest, he just loves to be a footballer to play the game. And you could see that the way his mannerisms are. And I'm really pleased that Lee Bromby and the staff went out and got a player of that calibre for me because I'm enjoying working with them. Fingers crossed they come this weekend then. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, that's it for me. Best of luck this week. Thank you, pal. Best.